Hi guys, welcome to the Warren Report channel and this is the show, Ask the Astromancer. You would kill or not the innocent countrymen? Ah, the eternal question of morality. To kill or not to kill the innocent countrymen, a quandary that plagues many a heart. Allow me to shed some light on my perspective. The term innocent is a tricky one. Who truly defines innocence? Is it merely the absence of malice? Or does it extend to those whose actions unknowingly contribute to a greater evil? Innocence can be a veil hiding darker intentions, you know? So, my dear fan, long story short, you bet I would. Why Lancelot Tartharos? Why did you hunt the mermaids with Sybil? Well, mate, that's a question that takes me back to some wild times, it does. Let me set the record straight, all right? Hunting mermaids with Sybil wasn't just some random escapade for me. Nah, it was all about loyalty, honor, and a good old dose of revenge. See, back in the day, these mermaids were causing all sorts of trouble. They were using their bewitching voices to lure sailors to their watery graves. Innocent lives were being lost, and that didn't sit right with me. So, when Sybil, a sly and cunning witch, approached me with a plan to put an end to their wicked ways, I couldn't resist. Plus, there was a bit of unfinished business between me and those slippery sea creatures. Now, you may ask, why did I team up with Sable? Well, she had her reasons, and I had mine. We may not have seen eye to eye on everything, but we shared a common goal. And let me tell you, mate, when you're knee-deep in the muck of a mermaid lair, fighting tooth and nail against those seductive creatures, you learn to trust the people. Can you train me? Oh, you want me to train you? Well, listen up, kid. Training with me ain't for the faint of heart. I'm Lancelot Hamilton, the ultimate badass on the battlefield. I've seen more bloodshed than a butcher shop during a sale. But hey, if you think you can handle it, I'll give you a shot. First things first, you gotta be disciplined. None of that slacking off nonsense. You need to be willing to push yourself to the limit, day in and day out. Second, you gotta have guts. I'm talking about the kind of guts that make you charge into battle without a second thought. And lastly, you gotta be willing to learn from your mistakes. Trust me, I've made my fair share of blunders, but I've always come out stronger. But hey, don't get me wrong. Training with me ain't all blood and guts. I'll teach you some fancy swordplay, show you how to strategize like a genius, and maybe even share a few war stories along the way. So if you're up for the challenge, strap on your armor and let's get this party started. Who bails on that be ending, honestly? Ha ha ha. Oh, you've hit a sore spot there, my friend. That B ending from the Knight of Lodis. Let me tell you, it's a tricky one. Now, I ain't gonna lie, it's got its fair share of twists and turns. But who in their right mind would bail on it? Not I, that's for sure. You see, it's like a hidden gem. A secret passage to a whole new world of possibilities from that side of the wheel. Sure. It may not be the flashy A ending that everyone's after, but sometimes the road less traveled is the one worth taking. It's got its own allure, its own unique flavor. And for someone like me, who's seen the darkest depths of war and treachery, a little bit of mystery can be quite enticing. Besides, who wants to be predictable, right? Life's about embracing the unexpected, going against the grain, and finding your own path. So, to all those who bailed on that B ending, well, they may have missed out on a truly remarkable journey. But hey, their loss, more treasures for the rest of us. What did the shopkeeper do to dragons I sold to him? The shopkeeper? 
He's got a secret passion for all things spicy. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about hot, fiery, tongue-scorching stuff. So what does he do? He takes those dragons, and instead of selling them off to some noble knight or a daring adventurer, he decides to turn them into the spicious hot sauce you've ever tasted! Can you believe it? Dragons turned into condiments. Now, if that ain't creativity, I don't know what is. So, next time you're in the mood for a little kick in your meal, just remember. It might just be my dragon spicing things up for you. Bon appétit. What happened to the female opinion leader and why you despise Tristan in the world ending? The female opinion leader. She was a force to be reckoned with. Smart, charismatic, and had a way with words that could sway even the most stubborn of minds. She had this uncanny ability to rally people to her cause to inspire them to fight for what they believed in. But then came Tristan. He saw the power the female opinion leader possessed and wanted it for himself. So he did what any self-serving opportunist would do. He betrayed her. He spread lies, turned people against her, and ultimately led to her downfall. It was a real knife in the back, let me tell you. But hey, Enough about those two. Let's focus on the future. On building a better world and kicking some serious enemy butt. That's where my heart truly lies. Did you regret not saving Sistina Farina? Regret. I fought tooth and nail to keep her safe, to protect her from the clutches of the enemy. But sometimes, even the mightiest warriors can't change the course of fate. When Sistina was taken from me, I blame myself for not being there, for not being strong enough to stop it. But regret? Nah, that's not my style. I channeled my anger and grief into becoming stronger, into leading my allies to victory. Every enemy I struck down was a reminder of the pain they caused me, the pain of losing her. So no, I don't regret not saving her. I regret that I couldn't save her. But mark my words, I'll make those responsible pay and vengeance will be served cold. You and Aracel are perpetually alone, yet perfect for each other. Get on that. Oh, you're hitting me with some personal stuff now, huh? Aracel, huh? Yeah, she's something else. We've got this intense connection, you know? Like fire and ice, always at odds, but drawn to each other like magnets. But life's a mess. We're stuck in this crazy world, fighting wars and dealing with all sorts of political nonsense. Duty keeps us apart. It's frustrating as hell, but we soldier on, hoping that someday our stars align and we can finally be together. So, yeah, I get it. We got some unfinished business there, and I won't deny the attraction. But for now, we'll keep fighting, keep pushing forward. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll get our shot. Until then, we'll just have to make do with stolen glances and unspoken promises. Do you miss Eleanor? Ah, Eleanor? Now that's a name that carries both joy and sorrow in my heart. She was a remarkable woman. Do I miss her? I, more than words can express, we shared a bond that went beyond mere comradeship. She was my confidant, my pillar of strength, and in the chaos of battle, her presence brought me solace. We fought side by side, facing countless dangers and overcoming insurmountable odds. But fate, that fickle mistress, had other plans for her. When Eleanor fell, defending the very ideals we held dear, a part of me shattered. The weight of her absence still lingers a constant reminder of the sacrifices made in pursuit of justice. She'll forever hold a cherished place in my heart, and her memory fuels my resolve to carry on, to honor her legacy. Eleanor, my dear, may your spirit soar among the stars, for you shall never be forgotten. Why female Varden is so rare? 
I. The female Vartan is a rare breed indeed, like a majestic unicorn prancing through the fields of battle. It's like finding a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow, or a four-leaf clover in a sea of three-leafed imposters. Why are they so rare, you ask? Let me tell you a little secret. The female Vartan possesses a unique combination of strength, beauty, and a dash of mystery that makes them stand out from the crowd. Perhaps it's their exceptional skills in combat that keeps them hidden. Or maybe they're just too busy slaying monsters and conquering kingdoms to be bothered by the mundane world. Why dragons can't fly? What? Dragons? They're big, bulky fellas with massive wings and quite the hefty body. <laughs> it's like strapping a jet engine to a boulder and expecting it to take off like a rocket. It's like trying to teach a fish to ride a bicycle or a squirrel to recite Shakespeare. It's just not in their nature. Come on, man. Why did you save Barbus? Barbus, my dear subordinate, was indeed someone I rescued from the clutches of defeat. But let's not sugarcoat the truth, shall we? When Denam's army bested him, it was a blow to his ego and a reminder of his fallibility. So did I save Barbus out of some noblest sentiment? Nay, my friend. It was a calculated move, a means to an end. I saw an opportunity to exploit his skills and bend him to my will. But when Barbas no longer proved useful, when he became a liability, I cast him aside without a second thought. It was a harsh lesson for him, a reminder of the consequences of failure and weakness, and, if I may be honest, it brought me a certain twisted satisfaction to witness his humiliation. So, why did I save Barbas? Not out of compassion or camaraderie, but for the sake of my own ambitions. In war, loyalty is a fickle thing, and I, Lancelot Tartaros, am a master of exploiting such weaknesses. Glory to Lodis. I would like to know what was your past like before Zytogenia invaded Zenobia. Wait, that's a question for me? I'm going to create a clone to answer, wait a moment. Ah, well, let me take you on a trip down memory lane, mate. Before those Xytogenia blokes showed up, life was a bit different for me, yeah? I was just an ordinary lad, you know, living in Zenobia, minding my own business. I had a crew of mates, and we used to go on these crazy adventures, fighting off bandits and whatnot. We were like the guardians of the land, keeping everything in order. But then, bam! Zetagenia decides to crash the party. They come storming in, invading Zenobia like it's nobody's business. Shook things up, I tell you. Suddenly, I found myself in the middle of a war, fighting for our freedom and all that. It was a tough time, mate. But you know me, never one to back down from a challenge. So, I gathered my crew, create the resistance, rallied the troops, and we gave those Zetagenia chaps a run for their money. We fought tooth and nail, mate. And let me tell you, it wasn't just about winning battles. It was about fighting for what we believed in, defending our homeland and standing up against those who tried to take it away from us. It was a bloody tough fight. But we held our ground and made them regret the day they messed with Zenobia. Who is Lord Bane? I remember the fallen angel calling his name before gaining his demonic from. Lord Bane ain't your friendly neighborhood, let me tell you. He's got this aura of darkness surrounding him, an air of malevolence that just screams trouble. But hey, trouble's my middle name, so I can respect that. He's got this twisted sense of power, craving dominion over everything and everyone. The guy's got ambition. He's a master manipulator, pulling strings behind the scenes, plotting and scheming, all in the name of his own twisted agenda. So, if you ever find yourself crossing paths with Lord Bane, tread carefully 
because he's one devil you don't want to mess with. Are you single? I find myself traversing the path of solitude, a lone wolf in the shadows. Yes. However, let it be known that the heart is a capricious beast, and who knows what unexpected twist the future may bring. For now, my commitment lies with my cause, and the affairs of the heart shall wait patiently for their turn. Who was the one who gave the prophecy that all the Zenobians would return? Ah, the prophecy. It was none other than the Oracle. That mysterious figure shrouded in secrets and whispers. The Oracle, she had this uncanny ability to foresee the future and drop these mind-boggling prophecies. We had just survived a hellish war, and the Zenobians, my people, were scattered across different lands. We needed hope, a glimmer of light in those dark times, and the Oracle delivered. They claimed that all the Zenobians, every last one of us, would return from the trip to Valeria. It was like a beacon of hope, a promise of reunions and second chances. But let me tell you, it wasn't an easy journey. We faced treacherous battles, political turmoil, and the weight of our own pasts. The prophecy became a driving force for us, a reminder that we had a destiny to fulfill. So we fought tooth and nail, pushed ourselves to the limit, and eventually, against all odds, we made it. It was a moment of triumph, a testament to the power of belief and the strength of our bonds. Do you love Denam despite his decisions? Well, 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 if it isn't the million goth question. Love, now that's a tricky thing, ain't it? Denham, my dear Denham, bless his soul, has made some questionable decisions, to put it mildly. But you know what? Love ain't about agreeing with everything someone does. It's about seeing the good in them, even when they mess up big time. Deep down, I know he's got a heart of gold. He's got this unwavering determination to fight for what's right, even if it means making tough sacrifices. I guess you could say he's my knight in not-so-shiny armor. What was your childhood like? A little girl, growing up, in the midst of chaos and strife. I learned to be quick on me feet, dodging danger at every turn. While other kids were playing games, I was learning the art of magic and necromancy. My mentors taught me to be cunning, resourceful, and always keep me wits about me. It was a tough childhood, no doubt, but it shaped me into the woman I am today, a force to be reckoned with. I would make my way to Fiddick and ask the Dark Knights, can I borrow Ozma for one night? Well, well, well. Look who we have here. You dare to come up to and ask such a foolish request? Let me tell you something, pal. I don't lend out my precious Ozma to anyone. She's off limits to scumbags like you. But since you seem so eager to come to Fidoc, you and I can meet. How about that? Let me paint a little picture for you. Imagine this. You're tied up, helpless, and at my mercy. I'll have my tools ready, ready to unleash my artistic talents upon your fragile body. Oh, the screams of agony will be music to my ears. I'll take my time, savoring every moment as I carve my knife into your flesh. And just when you think it can't get any worse, I'll make sure you're begging for death. So. My dear friend, the next time you think about making such a stupid request, remember this little chat we had. I suggest you run along now before I decide to turn my imagination into reality. Trust me, it won't be pretty. What is your end goal, Lancelot? This is not the path that Rictor and especially not Eleanor would have wanted you to take. Did you learn nothing from Sybil? You speak of Richter and Eleanor, two noble souls who believed in a different path, a path of compassion and righteousness. I cannot deny the truth in your words, for their ideals still linger within me, even as I walk this darker road. 
My end goal is a world shepherded by my own hands. I have seen the horrors of war, the injustices that fester in the hearts of men. And I seek to mold a realm where strength and order prevail. It is a path paved with sacrifice, where the ends may justify the means, even if it means straying from the path my fallen comrades would have wished for me. Whether my end goal aligns with theirs, only time will reveal. Do Curse Weapon really reduce its user's luck? With each swing, you're gambling your luck away, rolling the dice on misfortune. But hey, sometimes the thrill of defying fate is worth the risk. If you're willing to dance with darkness, embrace the curse, and challenge your destiny head on. What were your intentions in that drenched abandoned room with Olivia? It was quite the moment. Olivia and I, we had this connection, this spark, if you will. We were both fighting for a cause, a cause that meant something to us. And in that room, in that moment, I wanted to show her that she wasn't alone. I wanted to let her know that I was there for her, no matter what. Now, I won't lie, there might have been a bit of romance in the air, but it wasn't just about that, you know? It was about trust, understanding, and solidarity. We were comrades fighting side by side, and in that drenched, abandoned room, we shared a vulnerable moment amidst the chaos. It was a moment of camaraderie and compassion, a moment that reminded us why we were fighting in the first place. My intentions were pure. What part of Come This Way is unclear, my man? Let me tell you. Sometimes it's not about the clarity of the words, but the circumstances surrounding them. You're in the midst of a battlefield, swords clashing, magic flying, and arrows whizzing past your head. When chaos reigns supreme, things can get a tad bit confusing. Sorry about that. Do you like each other? Of course I like him. All the opponents like each other, deep down. In addition, he taught me how to wear a hood to hide. Fantastic knowledge! We share a name. We share a certain level of skill. And we share a burning desire to come out on top. But make no mistake, I don't like him. Not one bit. Tartaros is cunning, ruthless, and has a knack for getting under my skin. He's like that annoying itch you just can't scratch. Mark my words, one day, I'll stand victorious over that smug face of his. Keep dreaming, Zenobia's puppy. Cashua and Danum could stay together as a couple after they discovered that they weren't siblings. It's weird, but I find they would be a perfect couple. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses there, buddy. I gotta say, that question really tickles my funny bone. Danam and I as a couple? Are you kidding me? Look, I get it. We're not blood siblings and all, but we practically grew up together, you know? We fought side by side, spilled blood together, and endured all sorts of crazy stuff. We're like family. And I ain't talking about the sappy, lovey-dovey kind of family. I mean, the I got your back no matter what kind of family. Danam and I are a team, and we'll keep fighting together till the bitter end no matter what anyone else thinks. That's just how it is. This question is for you. Why do you always sucker me into using you only to get my heart continuously broken on missed hits? Ah, you're talking about me infamous accuracy, eh? Well, let me tell you, it's not my fault, mate. Nah, it's all on you, the unlucky soul who decided to put me on the battlefield you see, I got this sixth sense, this innate ability to sense when someone's got it in for me. And guess what? It's you? Yeah, you. I can practically smell it on you. So, every time you bring me into the fight, I'm like, All right, Hobarim, time to teach this bloke a lesson. But then I realize it's you, and I'm like, Nah, not today, pal. I'm gonna have a little fun with you. 
And that's when my accuracy goes out the window. It's like my swords have a mind of their own, swerving and dodging, just to mess with you. But hey, look on the bright side. At least it keeps things interesting, right? Keeps you on your toes, wondering if this time, just maybe, I'll actually hit the mark. It's all part of the Haberim experience, my friend. You're welcome 